My inspiration for today's topic was a video I watched recently by a Spanish-language YouTuber. In the video, he was explaining the pronunciation of Spanish D, and he said that D is pronounced something like the TH in the English word they, a sound he transcribed DTH. I think he intended for the viewer to understand that the sound made by Spanish D is like a cross between D and th. Then as an example, he gave the word donde, which he pronounced donde, and transcribed something like this. Is there anything wrong with this explanation? How about this word as an example of that explanation? In today's video, we're going to talk about some very important principles of Spanish pronunciation, and I'm going to present them in a way that I've never done before, a way that I think will give some of you that flash of insight that you need to make a leap forward in your personal progress and learn to pronounce these sounds in a more authentically native-like way. All right, so what was wrong with that YouTuber's explanation? Well, the answer is an idea that doesn't just relate to Spanish D, but also BV and G. I find this extremely interesting, and I hope I can make it as interesting for you as it is for me. In standard Spanish, the phonemes B, D, and G are pronounced as very soft fricatives and approximants most of the time. They're only pronounced as stops in certain phonetic contexts. The approximant version of B and G are very intuitive pretty much exactly what you'd expect them to be. Approximant B is pronounced by bringing your lips very close to each other, as if you were about to pronounce an ordinary B sound. But instead of making them touch, you merely bring them very close to each other. So it's like a very soft B sound, B, instead of B. Similarly, approximant G is pronounced by bringing the back of your tongue very close to the soft palate, as if you were going to make an ordinary G sound, but not quite. So it's like a very soft G sound, G instead of g. So most of the time, Spanish b is pronounced like a very soft b, and Spanish g is pronounced like a very soft g. Spanish d, however, is articulated quite differently from its English counterpart. Spanish fricative d is pronounced with the tip of your tongue between your upper and lower front teeth, just like English voice th in words like weather and clothing. This is a very important point, and I can't stress it enough. While approximant B and G can be thought of as just softened versions of the B and G sounds you're already familiar with, fricative D is not just a softened version of an English-style D. It's articulated with the tongue in a completely different part of the mouth. It's pronounced just like the English voice TH. All right, now in certain phonetic contexts, B, D, and G are pronounced more the way English speakers would expect them to be pronounced, especially B and G. Stop B is pronounced by bringing the lips completely together. B and stop G is pronounced by bringing the back of the tongue into contact with the soft palate. G. But once again, Spanish D is a bit different from its English equivalent. The stop version of Spanish D is pronounced by bringing the tongue into contact with the back of the upper front teeth. D. This is different from English D, in which the tongue touches the gummy ridge above the upper front teeth, and it makes a different sound. D. As opposed to D. All right. So most of the time, Spanish B, D, and G phonemes are pronounced as approximants or fricatives, but occasionally they're pronounced as stops. But how do you know when to pronounce each version? The rule is very simple. B, D, and G are pronounced with the soft version all the time in every phonetic context except when they come at the beginning of an utterance or when they appear immediately following particular sounds. For B, that sound is the M sound. For D, it's two sounds, L and N. And for G, it's the N sound. I think the reason behind this phonological rule is easy to understand. The normal expression of these sounds is as approximants or fricatives, but there are certain phonetic contexts in which it's most natural to pronounce them as stops. At the beginning of an utterance, the mouth is at rest, and the organs of the mouth are touching. In that context, it's most natural to pronounce them with the organs of the mouth touching. B, D, G. Additionally, the M sound is pronounced with the lips touching, so immediately following M, it's most natural to pronounce B with the lips touching too. Mb. Similarly, L and N are pronounced with the tip of the tongue making contact, so immediately following L and N, it's most natural to pronounce D with the tongue making contact too. Ld. Nd. And the N sound preceding G is pronounced with the back of the tongue touching the soft palate 
So immediately following N, it's natural to pronounce G as a stop, with the back of the tongue touching the soft palate in the same spot. Ng. One very important concept that must be kept in mind is that all rules of Spanish phonology apply across word boundaries. So when a word starts with one of these sounds, whether it's pronounced as an approximate or fricative, or as a stop, depends on the sound that the preceding word ends with. Let's look at some example words and phrases. Abuela. Asombro. This B is a stop because it comes after M. Palabra. Sabemos. También. This B is a stop because it comes after M. Bebida. In this case, the first B is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Una bebida. And here, the same B in the same word is pronounced as an approximant because it comes after a vowel. Buenos. In this case, B is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Son buenos. And in this case, B is still a stop because it comes after the M sound. I explain in my video on N that N before B is pronounced as an M sound. Pobre. Hombre. This B is a stop because it comes after M. Libro. Queda. Cuidado. Verdadero. Mundo. This D is a stop because it comes after N. Caldo. This D is a stop because it comes after L. Dinero. This D is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Ese dinero. And in this case, the same D in the same word is pronounced as a fricative because it comes after a vowel. Era de oro. This D is a fricative because it comes after a vowel. Eran de oro. And here, the same D in the same word is pronounced as a stop because it comes after N. Ladrón. Tendrá. This D is a stop because it comes after N. Andando. These Ds are both stops because they come after N. Algo. Tengo. This G is a stop because it comes after N. Seguro. Lugar. Amigo. Ganso. This G is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Un ganso. And this time it's still a stop because it comes after N. Sangre. This G is a stop because it comes after N. Garantía. This G is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Una garantía. And the same G in the same word is now an approximant because it comes after a vowel. Pregunta. Gana. This G is a stop because it comes at the beginning of an utterance. Ella gana. And the same G in the same word is now an approximant because it comes after a vowel. All right, I hope that explanation and those examples helped you understand better how these sounds are pronounced. Okay, so back to the scenario we started this video with. What was wrong with that YouTuber's explanation? You should all be able to answer that question now. It seems that what he did was take the two different sounds that Spanish D may have and sort of combine them, suggesting that the D phoneme represents only one sound that is sort of a blend of the two sounds. Now, on the positive side, he should be congratulated for knowing that there is a difference between English and Spanish D, and that Spanish D is related to English voice TH. So, in spite of his inaccuracies, students who follow his instructions will pronounce Spanish D better than if they just pronounce it like English D. But then he selected a very unfortunate word as an example of his pronunciation, because the fact is that both of the Ds in donde, as pronounced in isolation, are dental stops. It is not donde but donde. So this YouTuber's explanation is certainly better than pronouncing D just like English D, but it's somewhat inaccurate, and it completely ignores phonology, the idea that D can be pronounced more than one way. And the example he chose to demonstrate his pronunciation is actually pronounced with a Spanish D sound that he doesn't seem to realize exists. All right, this has been our discussion of the Spanish voiced approximants and fricatives and their stop variants.
If you've enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.